Hi, and welcome. I'm Skip Jennings, your transformational coach, and welcome to Gentle Yoga. Today, we're going to focus on breathing and hip openers. If you are like me, you're probably sitting at the computer way too much or laying down watching your favorite TV show and all that. Hey, no judgments. We need to be doing that but we're probably not as active as we were maybe a few months ago or a couple months ago. What gentle, gentle yoga does, it reminds us to remember to be gentle with ourselves, to be loving with ourselves. And to remember that yoga is a practice. We continue to recognize how important a practice is. So if you're just starting your practice, welcome. If you are coming back to yoga, I'm glad you're here. This is the time that we get to really focus on the energy of gentleness, of love, of compassion. This is a class that I love to teach because it helps me to slow down, be really aware of why I'm here. Why am I on the mat? And to be loving with myself, especially when we're getting into those more challenging poses, that's the time you're going to be called for to be really loving and caring for yourself. Today, we're going to focus on breath, which in the yoga practice, we call it the pranayama. Prana is energy. Yama is control or awareness. So we are aware of the breathing. We control the breathing. The prana is the energy life force that as we breathe in and we breathe out, we begin to recognize how important that energy is. So we're gonna do five different practices, practices of pranayama. And then we're gonna get into the hip openers. We're gonna open up from the inner thigh and the outer thigh, which is all connected to the back and the spine. We're going to actually focus on being in the poses a little bit longer. So we can really connect with what is happening with the body. In this reset time, we might be a little bit less aware of how we're sitting and how we're moving. Therefore, when we stand up, we might feel a little dis-ease, a little discomfort. If there's anything that is in your way or anything that doesn't feel good to you, I'm gonna invite you to stop, be still, and be present. Yoga is a healing practice. And we're gonna remind ourselves that during this reset, it is a time of healing. I've been pulling forth the, these R's that have been coming through the letter R's. And it's been reset, renew, revitalize, remember. What are you remembering? Uh -huh. Yeah, remember. And refocus. This is what yoga does. It helps us to shift. And we want to be able to move into a place that's going to allow us to be better as we reemerge because it's coming. We're going back into the world from being in quarantine. But what gifts from this quarantine are you going to bring into the world with you? So this practice, we're going to talk a little bit about reemerging and renewing and remembering and recovering. And that's going to be our mental focus. The breath is always such an important part. So that's going to be our energetic focus. And then the physical focus will be the actual hip openers and the movement of the body. So mind, body, and spirit comes together in this moment. So let me tell you what you need today. I'm sitting on it. You need your floor. You need your mat. You don't need a lot of room. As you see in my living room, it's not a lot of room but there's room to do yoga. There's always room to do practice wherever you are. So I'm right down the center of my, my living room and the distance or the width I need is the arm distance of my hands, a little bit wider than the second mat that I'm using. You don't need a mat and you don't need the fancy tools and, and that I have today or the toys I have today, but if you do great, pull them out. Let me show you what I have. Today I'm sitting on two blocks. I like to sit on two blocks. It gives me a lot of height. So here are my two blocks right here. And I put them side to side. I like the cork blocks because it gives me a little bit more stability, especially when I'm doing my balance poses. I have my big pillow, my bolster. I'm going to put it right on top of here, which gives me a little bit more height for sitting because we're going to do the first part of our practice of breathing 
seated. And then I like a little bit more height. I take my blanket and I roll my blanket right on top and lay it right there. Here's what happens. When I get a lot of height, when I'm seated, I give myself less pressure onto my hips. My knees are lower than my hips and that begins to open up. I can even feel opener right here. My history is I've had two back surgeries, yes. And 30 years of fitness, I've been doing this for a long time. I have had back surgery. Never had a fusion, but I ha I've had a laminectomy and a disectomy. So I'm very cautious and very aware and very conservative when it comes to my yoga practice. This is why gentle yoga has helped me out so much. And yes, I do teach the vinyasa classes. I do teach the harder classes, but Gentle yoga is my jam. I love being gentle myself. It reminds me to slow down and to love myself. Compassion, love, the heart area, the heart chakras. That's what I love. That's what I love to teach. So today, gentle in my hips, gentle in my back, gentle in the body, gentle in how I think. Sometimes we get into that place of we're, 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 we're being challenged with something and we're off balance and we are really you know, not so kind to us ourselves, how we talk to ourselves. So gentle yoga is a practice of being kind and loving to yourself. So if you don't have the blocks or you don't have the moisture or, or the blanket to sit on, you can do this on the couch. My couch is right behind me. Sometimes I do my pranayama seated on the couch. It's okay. If you don't want to use a block, you can sit right on the floor in Sukhasana, soft cross legs. You find what's right for you. You find what's good for you. And last but not least, I, I, later on we're gonna be using the strap. If you have a strap, that's great. If you don't, go grab a towel. But make sure you have some water. This is so important. I'm drinking from my crystal water bottle. There's a crystal right inside the bottle. I don't know if you can see it, but my business partner, my co-host for my podcast, Robin gave me this and it's been a lifesaver because I'm drinking the element of my crystals into the body. So I am so grateful for this. So welcome, welcome to gentle yoga and pranayama. We're going to go here in a moment. Peace and blessings. So welcome, welcome to pranayama. The first breath work, um, sometimes it's called breath work. It's just about being aware of the breathing. So that's the first one we're going to practice. So I'm gonna invite you to get really comfortable. If you're on your couch, great. If you're sitting on the blocks, make sure your body's nice and lifted. I'm not gonna invite you, sometimes I like to facilitate meditation where we're laying onto our backs, but not today. We're gonna to be very aware, we're gonna take a seated pose. So if you're in Sukhasana, that's a gentle cross legs where your ankles are crossed in front, make sure your knees are a little bit lower than your hips. As we talked about in, in the introduction, how it's so important to relieve the tension from our knees being up here. You can feel the contraction of the hips to allowing them just to fall forward here. I'm going to invite you to bring your hands right onto your thighs and your palms are going to be open. We're going to close the index finger and the middle and the thumb, excuse me, index finger and the thumb together. Keep the palms lifted. This is a mudra of Om. It's also a sacred mudra of receiving. We are receiving the gifts of practice today. So I invite you, if it feels comfortable for you, to go ahead and close your eyes and just listen. Or you can keep your eyes open and watch me. I'm gonna guide you through your breath work. And if at any time, anything that I'm practicing or anything that doesn't feel comfortable for you, just breathe, go back to your normal breathing for recovery. Breath is going to be recovery, but it is work to breathe in this type of, of, of practice. Also, if you're dealing with your cycle women, you know what I'm talking about, you're dealing with that time of the month, this might not be your jam today. You might just skip over this and go directly to our hip openers, which is gonna be the second part of this video. 
The other thing too is that guys or women as well, if you just had a big lunch, you might want to wait to do this practice because everything is going to connect right into the torso, into the heart area. And in Aramaic, um, a language, the heart means full torso. And I subscribe to that. I love that. So think about your torso as your heart today. One big breath through your heart, not just in this area, not in the chest, but into your tummy. This is belly breathing. We're going to breathe deep. And sometimes when we're in the middle of uh, something that is challenging for us, maybe this reset is really challenging for you. Breathe deep. It brings you to a place of relaxation again. Breathe as deep as you can. So the first practice we're going to do is just called breath awareness and belly breathing. So I invite you to lengthen through your spine and from your tailbone. You can even feel behind you in your tailbone, making sure your sacrum area and your piriformis is nice and lengthened and not a nice little, it's a nice long spine in the back here. And make sure our hands are nice and open, laying onto our, our thighs, palms are open, index finger. And again, you can close your eyes if you choose to. I'll guide you through. So the first thing I just want you to do is just breathe. I want you to start to breathe. It doesn't matter if you breathe through your nostril or through your mouth. I will guide you through in a moment of how to breathe. But as you close your eyes, I want you to begin to recognize your breath. Your breath as a source of energy. Notice as you breathe in, feel the vibration of the breath. And notice as you exhale, feel that same vibration and energy leaving the body. Just nose the breath, inhale. And exhale. In this beginning opener, create your own rhythm. Inhale. And exhale. Notice as you breathe in, there is a lowering of the diaphragm, an expansion of the torso. And notice as you exhale, the diaphragm lifts up and the torso contracts. Be aware of the ebb and flow of the breath. Notice if you're breathing from your chest area. I invite you to breathe a little bit deeper. I invite you to take a deep breath in through the belly. Receive all the energy from the full torso down into the hips. And as you exhale, releasing as much air as you can. Notice as you breathe in, there's a natural lift to the torso. The heart lifts, the ribs lift. Even the shoulders can lift. And as you exhale, can you remain lifted? So there is a rise in the torso. And as you exhale, there is a rise in your energy. Just follow your breath. We get to remember here. Breath helps us to remember 
that we are alive. The breath helps us to remember the now moment. We cannot breathe in the future. We cannot breathe in the past. We can only breathe in this moment. Continue to breathe. And let's connect. I call this the yoga breath, the unity breath. So get together, let's breathe. Take a deep breath in through our nostrils, big inhale, inhale all the way through the nostrils, really expanding into the belly, getting the energy into the body, and a big exhale, just release. You can sigh through your mouth. Inhale through your nostrils, big, deep, deep breath in through our nostrils, inhale. And big exhale through the mouth. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Remember who and what you are. Exhale. Inhale to renew your mind. Exhale. Inhale to help the body to recover. Exhale. Inhale. Feel the vitalization happening in you right now. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Continue your own rhythm. Continue to breathe and remember Revitalize, renew, recover, rest, rest in the breath. Feel the energy. Feel the delicious slowness of the breath now. The gentleness of breathing. Continue with your rhythm. So the next practice is called controlled breathing. It's a way to connect with how you breathe, but you control your breathing. Sometimes we breathe with awareness and sometimes, sometimes we don't. So welcome to controlled breathing, pranayama. 
This is based on counts, on counting the breath. We're going to start with the smaller count of breathing in, holding at the very top, and control the breath as it comes out. We control the inhale. We control the exhale. So let's begin. Inhale through your nostrils for four counts. One, two, three, four. Hold the breath, feel the breath regulating, feel the energy in your body. Exhale for four, three, two, one. And fully release all the breath that's left in there. Let's go back to our normal breathing for recovery. We're going to add on to the count by two. Let's begin. Inhale. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold the breath at the very top. Allow the energy, the prana to regu regulate the cells. Feel the energy. And then begin to exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one, release. Return back to your normal breathing. And for the recovery, if you want to move your hands around, if you've had the mudra, if you want to change the mudra around, you're more than welcome to. In this, you can actually turn your palms down for this next round if you choose to. It's up to you or keep your mudra. So we're going to add on two more counts. Let's begin to breathe in for eight counts. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold the breath, feel the energy, feel the prana within you. Feel the vibration, this energy is so powerful. It's healing you. And then begin to release for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and fully release, let it go. Beautiful. So our next practice is called three-part partial breathing or partial breathing. How it's practiced is we're going to breathe from the deep part of our belly, right around the groin area, the hip openers. We're going to breathe from that area and we'll stop about three, about one quarter of the way into the breath and hold the breath. Then we'll take it a little bit more, we'll breathe up towards the chest. Take a little bit more air here, we'll hold space, and then we'll breathe all the way up to the very top of our head. That's where we're gonna breathe, hold the very top, and full release. We'll do it three rounds, and then we'll change the direction. We'll breathe in from the very top of our heads. We'll release breath and stop at the heart. Release breath again and stop at the belly, and then fully empty out. Let's do it. So if your legs have been crossed in one direction, I'm going to invite you uncross the legs. Let's so change them around. And mind you, you can do that any time throughout any practice, any yoga practice. When something feels uncomfortable, switch it around. 
Why? Because you're aware of the body and what's happening. Okay? So if you want to change your hands around and you're more than welcome, I like to go into a prayer mudra, hands right here at the heart. It reminds me when it gets to the heart here, and we're talking about the whole torso as being a part of the heart today. But when it gets right here in the chest where the heart chakra is, which is compassion and love, that's where I'm like holding a lot of energy there, just reminding to send out a prayer a message, a love energy into the world right now from myself to you because you and I are one. Let's breathe. So three part breathing. We're going to start off by taking breath in from the groin area right into the belly. So take a deep breath in and then stop your breath there. Hold your breath. Now take a little bit more and breathe all the way up into your chest. Hold the breath there. And now take another breath in, big, big breath, and breathe to the very, very top of your head. Hold your breath, allow the breath to regulate, feel all the energy that's in you, and then a full release, let it go. <sighs> let it empty all, empty out the breath, let it go. And return back to your breath again. Turn, return back to your normal breathing for recovery. Let's do the second round. Inhale, from the groin area into the belly. Big breath in. Hold your breath. Bring in a little bit more air. Breathe into the chest area. Hold the breath. Now breathe in again, all the way up to the very top of your head. Breathe in, breathe in, beyond the head. Breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. Now hold your breath. Feel the energy. You're filled up on some great, beautiful energy. And a big release. Let it go. Let it all go. Let it all go. Yes. Return back to your breathing for recovery. One more round from the floor all the way up to the top of your head. Let's do it. So we breathe in from your groin area. Breathe in from the pelvic floor. Inhale. Breathe in. Stopping at the belly. Inhale. Breathe into the heart. Breathe in a little bit more. And breathe in all the way up to the very top of your head and beyond. Inhale. Hold here. Hold the breath. Feel the energy. Feel the prana. Feel the vibration. Feel the frequency. And full release. Let it go. Ha. Huh. Yeah. Return back to your normal breathing. How are you feeling through this? Be mindful that sometimes breath work can make us feel a little nauseous. If that's the case, stop. Just listen, breathe, or go right to the hip openers. They're coming up really soon. All right, so we're gonna switch it around. We're gonna switch it around, and this is a different way of doing this. So another way of doing this three-part breathing or partial breathing is to breathe from the very top of your head all the way up. We're gonna go from the pelvic floor all the way up to the very top of your head. Get a lot of breath in, and then we control the breath as it exhales from the top, and we exhale to the chest. And then we exhale it to the belly and then a full release. Let's do it. All right, so this can require a big, big, huge breath in. So breathe in from the floor into the belly, into the heart, all the way up to the top of the head. Breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. As much air as you can get in. There it is. Now hold to the very, very top and release a quarter of the breath. Release it to your heart. Hold it there. Remember the love. Release it down to the belly. Release a little bit more. And then fully release, let it go. Beautiful. Two more rounds. So, inhale, deep breath, deep belly, belly breath from the groin into the belly, into the heart, into the head, beyond the head. Take it all the way in, get a little bit more air in and hold to the very top, hold the breath. Now, through a quarter of the way, release the breath right around to the chest area. Release the breath. Hold it there. Now, release a little bit more. Another quarter of the breath right there and right in your belly. Good. And then full release of letting go. Return back to your breath for your recovery. Yeah. One more. One more. And if breathing is a challenge, then we understand that we need to be more focused on breath. So let's do it. One more round. 
hands to your heart if you choose to. Inhale from the floor, all the way up from the pelvic floor. Breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, all the way up to the very, very top of your head, all the way to the head and beyond. Hold the breath at the very top because we control the breath. And we release a quarter of the breath down by the chest. Just release a little bit of the breath. Hold there. Hold your breath. To release a little bit more right into the belly area. Release a little bit more breath. And then a full release. Let it all go. Let it all go. And return back to your breathing. Mm. Close your eyes just for a moment. I just want you to notice how you're breathing here. How are you feeling in the breath? How are you feeling? Feel the vibration, feel the energy, feel the frequency of breathing and remembering to breathe. So, so, so important. Beautiful. All right, so this is our last practice for the breath and we're gonna get into the hip openers. So this breath that we're gonna do is called box breathing and it comes from the Qigong practice, but I also practice this during my yoga sessions and my yoga classes, I will teach box breathing. So like a box, we're gonna make a breath or, or square with our breath. The box goes side here and then down, then across and then up and that's creating the breath. We're gonna do that with the breath. So think about the squares in four. We'll have four count breaths. We're gonna breathe in for four counts, hold for four counts, exhale fully for four counts, and stay completely empty for four counts. It's very simple. It's a great practice and you can practice just to be aware of breathing. And I want you to be aware of how do you feel when you're taking the prana in, the energy in. How are you feeling? What's the energy? What's the vibration? What's the frequency that's coming forth in the breath? It's you. You're breathing the breath. The breath of God is breathing you. The breath of yoga is breathing you. But you are the breath. You notice the energy at the very top. And as you're holding the breath, notice what comes forth. There's these times where things can become very, very aware to us through the breath. And then notice as you exhale, are you rushing to exhale the breath or are you fully releasing? And then staying empty, staying empty your challenge. Sometimes in, in our resets, challenge is being still and being empty and not having distractions. So a lot can come forth. I just want you to be aware of what comes forth in your breath. So this is your last pranayama. Let's do it. Again, change your legs around if you need a little bit more of a shift, a little bit more of a movement. Okay, let's do it. So shift your body around if you want to uncross the legs again, if you need a little bit more uh, movement there, if you want to give yourself a little massage, your knees releasing, we're going to cross the legs again. I'm going to recross. I'm going to judge myself onto my seat a little bit more here and just get a little bit more comfortable. Yes. All right. So box breathing. Let's begin. Hands wherever you choose, wherever is comfortable for you. We have three rounds. You close your eyes, keep watching your set. It's up to you. Let's begin. We're gonna inhale for one, two, three, four. Hold your breath for four, three, two, one. Empty out the breath slowly, one, two, three, four. Stay empty for four, three, two, one. 
return back to your normal breathing to recover. So here's what we're doing next round. We're gonna slow down the count. Let's begin, second round. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Hold the breath, four, three, two, one, empty out, four, three, two, one, stay empty, four, three, two, one. Return back to your breath. Your normal breath for recovery. Let it all go. One more round. One more round. Let's do it. Box breathing. Let's begin. Inhale. One. Two. Three, four, hold the breath, four, three, two, one, empty out, one, two, three, four. Stay empty, four, three, two, one, release, let go. Return back to your breath. Oh, I hope you've enjoyed the breath work. I know whenever I consciously work on a breathing meditation or breath work, Three things will happen. It'll show me where I need to maybe practice a little bit more breath. It relaxes me, but it also renews my energy. So I hope you've enjoyed it. We're going to take a moment here. I'm going to switch around the setting of the room. Not much, but just make sure you can see what I'm doing for the hip openers. And I am excited about that. So part two coming up, peace and blessings. All right, so welcome to our hip openers. And we're gonna begin onto our backs. And it's very important to you know that I have the toys, I have all the tools that us yoga instructors have, but you don't need to have any. I'm gonna be giving a lot of uh, um, options where you can use the toys you have or nothing. You don't have to use anything. But um, I'm going to, I have them, I'm going to use them and it helps me to be gentle with myself. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go onto our spines, but I'm going to use the boister and it helps me to lift the heart and I'll show you how we're going to look and we're also going to use our blocks here. So I'm going to move this in the way I have my blanket here. I get a little pillow at the very top of my blanket and then I'm going to bring my hips right up onto the floor, but I'm gonna be right next to the boister right there. It's gonna be right underneath my sacrum. So what happens, it gives a nice little lift in my heart. So I'm gonna lean back here and I'm going to open up and then watch. I'm gonna grab my blocks here. I'm gonna turn my blocks inward, bring my soles of the feet together. Supta Baddha Konasana is a great pose of just opening and just be, being and breathing. So you see the blocks, I turn the blocks inward and then lower the knees down onto the blocks and it's a nice little place where the knees feels really comfortable. And in this, in this uh, pose here, I want you to think about all the amazing things that you're birthing from this time from the reset. 
and your heels of the feet together, your toes are coming together. And this is also known as goddess pose. People call this goddess pose. They've been in classes, many names. But Supta Baddha Konasana is a, you know, Supta on your spine, butterfly pose, legs are opening up. But it's also a time that we can really begin to feel like we're birthing these new ideas that are coming through us. We talked about the breath a little bit ago, and the breath brings in new ideas. So in this moment, as we're preparing to do our gentle movement, the hatha, which means physical practice, we get to really take a moment just to set our intention. So I invite you to open up your knees, stay real wide and open. Maybe take your hands, open up a little bit wider here. Just close your eyes for a moment. And in this moment, I want you to remember, I'm here with you, I'm practicing with you today. So everything that you're doing, I'm gonna do with you. You're not alone. You're connecting here through YouTube or Facebook or wherever you are online. This digital platform brings us together. So I start with a little gratitude. Gratitude to bless the body temple for showing up for practice today. Grateful to connect with the body temple. Gratitude that we are together in this time and space. So just take some deep breaths here. Thank the body for being here today and I thank you. Take a deep breath in and a big exhale, big sigh through your mouth, just a big release, inhale. And big exhale. Do that again, big deep breath in. And big exhale. And one more time, take a deep breath in. And big exhale. So grab your blocks, we're gonna take the blocks, take them to the side, move them out of the way. Bring your knees together. And first things first, I want you to do is gonna bend your knees, but keep your heels to the floor and, and just allow your body just to be. If you're on your backs, great. If you're on the voice, just stay there. Bring the right knee into your heart. Just give yourself a little bit of a pull here. A little bit of a pull, we're gonna to begin to wake up the glutes. And the glutes are a very important part of our hip openers today. Glutes are important. And when we're sitting down, we're doing too much sitting. Guess what gets tight? The glutes. So we're doing a little bit of a pull here, a little bit of waking up. Now roll your ankle to the outside, which is a big inflammation release. Sometimes just from walking or just sitting or whatever, get a lot of inflammation. So we're opening up through our ankles. Let's go to the opposite side, big roll here. Good. Nice, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our right knee, cross it over the left knee, and we're gonna do a little bit of a thread the needle. So take your right hand, you're gonna take your right hand through the right knee here, reach underneath, and grab either your knee, or you can grab your hamstring or whatever works for you today. And just give a little pull. I want you to notice what your right glute looks like. We can judge our way side to side. And remember, if you're on your back, same deal, same deal. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of movement here. Notice the right hip. Notice the right gluteus maximus minimus. And what's opening here? What's happening? What are you feeling this? Bring the energetic feeling to the work. Good. One more breath. And let's just release. Let's take the feet down and breathe. And maybe we'll just go and open up and go side to side. Maybe windshield your knees side to side, whatever you need to do. And remember to be gentle with yourself and loving and kind. Sometimes yoga is just a healing practice, but sometimes we're not so gentle and kind when we're practicing. All right, let's do the other side, you ready? We're gonna take the left knee up. We're gonna give ourselves a little bit of a tug here and feel the glutes saying hello to us. And just begin to give a little knee roll here, a little ankle roll, excuse me. A little ankle roll to the outside, loosening up any inflammation in the ankle. And then let's take it the other way. Good, it's good to move. Sometimes gentle yoga is just the practice of the day. This is what I need. I mean, some days, yeah, we're gonna go deep in the vinyasa. But some days it's just to be gentle, which is so important. We're gonna cross the ankle, the left ankle over the right knee, 
Left hand goes through the window, we thread the needle, and we're gonna grab the right knee here. And remember, you can grab your hamstring or whatever feels comfortable for you. And give it a nice little tug here, maybe judge side to side. And then as we begin to settle in, we can practice the stillness when it says yes. It says yes to you to be still, be still. And this is where we begin to connect. So here's that stillness here. Remember your breath, remember your breth. And some of us practice the Ujjayi breath, which is the victorious breath. In the gentle yoga, I just teach my, my students just to breathe. Notice when you're breathing in, notice when you're breathing out. There's really no work in the breath, just be aware of the breath. Good, one more breath. Good, we're gonna release, let go, and, and just let our knees just go side to side. You're gonna open up through your hips. So, I hope you have your strap or your towel. If you have your strap or your towel, good, grab it. I want you to grab your strap and a couple of things, I'm gonna set up for you for this to show you. If you're using a yoga strap, a lot of times using yoga straps can be a little bit challenging because we don't really know how to do it. But if we have a little yoga strap, if you have a buckle, there should be a buckle in your strap and you just open up where it divides here. Take the edge of your strap and take it to the very bottom of where the buckle opens up and the belt is close to the belt. And then you flip it all the way through, come all the way through, and then go to where it's at the very top of the divide. And then you create a little bit of a loop there that should not open up. And that's gonna help us for our hamstring stretch. So I'm gonna go back to my beautiful, comfortable little spot here. I'm gonna keep my, my left knee bent. But I'm going to take the right leg and bring it into the loop or your towel. I'm going to try to, to, to get a little tension onto the strap here. Extend the leg nice and high. You can have a block here if you want to have a block to keep it really energized here. And, and also safe. So you give a nice little pull here. Keep the other knee really anchored here. And you're going to pull the, the foot towards you. Flexing your foot, getting really long from the ankle all the way into the, to the hamstring, into, all the way into your glute. And you can pull with both hands here, opening up through your elbows. Look at your big toe. And if you're like me, I haven't had a, a mani-pedi in so long. It's like, oh. But you know what? Hey, reset right now. And I, I've been actually doing my own mani-pedi. Thank God for manicures. Thank God for my friends who take care of me. Give a nice little pull here, a little bit more. Yeah. So we're gonna take the foot, the heel right above you. We're gonna plant the left heel, the left foot down to the floor. And then we're going to open up both legs. One leg, left side is bent. The right side's gonna be nice and open, get a nice little pull. I call this an arrow pose here. So you see this knee, it just opens up to the side. I can find my block and lay it to the side there so it can really get a nice little support there. So the block is right underneath the knee to the side there. One day I'm gonna be able to have like multiple cameras in a great studio to do this work where we can see everything that's happening. But right now we're just doing in-home yoga with Skip, that's it. It's real deal yoga, that's what we do. So we got a little arrow pose here, straight leg on one side. Good, and then we're just gonna bring it back up. See where we're landing here, the block just drops, and we're just gonna bend the knee, take the foot out of the strap. Good, just give yourself a little love here. Feel what's going on, maybe in your hamstrings. Yeah, good. Nice, so here we go. Other side, guys. We're gonna take the foot into the, the loop first. Get a nice long loop there. Take the foot up. We're gonna start off with that hamstring stretch because it's all connected from the ankle into the calf, into the hamstring, into the glutes. It's all connected, which actually opens up your hip. So we're working on that adductor stretch here. So my friends, we're just gonna give a nice little pull here, get that block ready. I'm gonna have it right here ready, and hopefully you'll be able to see that. I think you will be able to. Flexing your foot, give a nice little heel flex to the sky here, lengthen through the back of the leg, and, and so important to go back to your breath. 
And the other important thing is to realize all sides are not e created equal. This might be your pretty side. I have one side is really flexible, one side is really pretty. There are no bad sides in yoga. <laughs> Only the good side and, and the pretty side. <laughs> A little fun. I love having fun in my yoga classes. I miss you guys. You guys who take my gentle yoga class on Tuesday and Thursday. We'll be back. We'll be back, I promise. I miss you guys. So flexing the foot here. And then we're going to do that adductor. Adductor, doctor, we're gonna take it out to the side. So here we go, my friends. Taking the strap into the left hand, the left foot's gonna go out to the side, and it's just gonna open up where it needs to open up here. We're gonna keep our hips onto the floor, and then this is where I get the block. I tilt it in, and I allow my knee just to float to the side there. That knee is still bent, so my right knee's bent, but my left leg is nice and long. And it's time just to settle and see where I'm landing here. See what comes up, what's the breath that comes up here, and just feeling the breath here. Such a good pose just to understand it's all connected. This pose will teach you your adductors outside and the adductors, it's all connected here, but it's the opener into the hips that we're practicing today. So very, very, very important. And slowly just bring that leg, we even bend the leg as we come up, release the block, let the leg go, release your strap here, let it all go. Take to the side here. Now let's go back into that butterfly pose. Bring your soles and your feet together and allow your knees just to open up without the blocks now and see if there's even, even a more of an opener in your inner thigh. And just take a moment here just to breathe, be still and just connect. Mm. Really good. So we're going to stay on our backs and um, we're going to go into a happy baby and happy baby I gave you a way that you can you know, work with this but I want you to grab your big toes if you can so keep your knees bent here and grabbing your big toes and you're going to bring your index finger and your thumb to create a little cuff around your toes and then take it up to happy baby here heels to the sky you're going to bring your elbows you're going to open up your inner, inner thigh here and just breathe then just still be still here and practice. And we're gonna do a little bit of motion here, a little bit of movement. And I want you to take it to the range of motion your hamstrings will allow you to go today. So you're gonna just take a deep breath and as you exhale, begin to open up your legs to an inverted eagle where your legs get really long and straight here. And then we're just gonna come back into happy baby. So let's do it. Inhale, open up. Good, exhale back into happy baby. Elbows in between your, your knees. Let's do that again, inhale, open. Good, exhale, coming back in. And this is not about you getting your splits on. This is just about you creating a little bit of work into your adductors and your adductors. Good, how about two more rounds? Big inhale. And you go to the place where it's right for you. Not right for your neighbor because all bodies are not created the same. One last time, breathe. Yes. And coming back in. Good. And just release your legs right down to the floor. Good. So here we're gonna do, we're gonna just slowly roll off the boister. We're gonna roll over to our side by side and take your time and just lay here into your fetus pose just for a moment. And then slowly, let's come up into a seated pose here. Good. Nice. So from here, we're just going to do a little bit of twisting motion to, to finish our opening sequence so we can really get into some deeper work here. So I'm going to sit back so you can see me. You're going to take your hand. You're going to grab the opposite knee, opposite hand. Take the hand behind you. I want you to twist look behind you to your back shoulder here. And just lean through your spine. You want to stay nice and tall. Good, and we're just going to the other side. Big twist here. Nice little twist. Good, and come back to center. Let's do it again. Let's open up a little bit more. Good, and coming back. One more time. Take it all the way around. Good. And coming back to center. Good. So. Now we're gonna just come up 
on to kneeling, so we're gonna do a lot of kneeling work here. A couple things I want you to do is make sure you grab your block, and I'm gonna show you where your block should be to the very top. I'm gonna move all of this stuff out of the way because we'll be coming back to it in a moment when we're getting to our pigeon pose here. So, if you can see, I'm gonna take one block to the very top, I'm gonna bring it right at the very top level here where you can see it here. I'm gonna get this trap out of the way, we'll come back to it in a minute. And I'll have another one that's gonna frame through our block today. Frame, frame through our, our, our mat today here. So then we're gonna go into a little cow cat. I want you to take your hands right down to the floor. Make sure your knees are in alignment with your hips. Roll your toes underneath. And the first thing I want you to do, I want you to lengthen through your spine. I want you to get really long to your spine. I want you to feel a corset that's around your waist. The corset is actually pressing in from your belly button into your back and, and your back into the belly button and then squeezing from the outside inward to the middle of your transverse abdominis. So let's continue to lengthen, making sure our knees are aligning with our, our hips. Toes rolled underneath, lengthen, head is long to the front of the room. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna inhale, lower the belly towards the floor and lift the heart. And then notice what your body's feeling here because now we're really helping our body to, as we begin to move, to have more mobility to our spine. And then as we exhale, rolling through your back and you're gonna arch your back like a scary cat, looking at your tailbone. Let's do that again, three more rounds. Inhale, lift the tailbone, lower the belly, look at the heart. And exhale, rolling through the back, and maybe get a little bit deeper here, a little bit deeper. Let's do that again. Inhale, lift. And exhale, really gentle, really slow, really slow moving. One more time, inhale, breathe in all the good energy of the universe. And then exhale, we're releasing that energy back into the universe, sweet. Nice. So we're gonna just neutral spine here, neutral spine, and we're gonna come up to kneeling, coming up to kneeling. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about stepping your right foot forward right to the very top of your mat, and you're gonna flatten out your back toe here. Use your blocks here just to help you to, to steady your body here. And as you lengthen through the back leg, you're gonna think about really getting long in your hip flexor, and that's part of the hip that we're opening up today. So we're gonna get really long into your hip flexor, but look at your sacrum. Feel your sacrum behind you. It should be nice and long. We're not gonna dump into the back, but we're gonna keep a nice lengthened sacrum there. We're gonna lower the hip towards the floor. Use your block to maintain your stability here. Look at your big toe. Your big toe is aligned with your right knee here. I'm just gonna take some time and I maybe judge the foot a little bit further to the front here and move the block out of the way so you can see. And maybe go a little bit deeper to really find that space that's really opening up through your iliac psoas, through your hip flexor. We're gonna hold here for five rounds of breathing and if this is too much at any time, come out of this, come out of this. The other thing too is we can use the blanket. The next round I'm gonna actually use the blanket. I should have put it down anyway. Forgive me, but we're gonna bring the blanket down to the ground for the next round in this hip opener. So I'll show you that in a moment. Good. And lift the heart a little bit higher in this next round of breathing. And you're gonna feel not even just an opening in the heart, but you're gonna also feel opening into this hip flexor here. Good. One more breath. Say hello to the quad. Say hello to the breath. Say hello to the hip flexor. Say thank you. Woo! This is a good one. All right. So gently, let's move back into our kneeling pose here. Yeah, open up your knees here. We're just gonna bring your toes together and reach your hands forward. We're gonna go into a wide-legged child's pose here. Head comes down to the mat and just full release here, full release. And this time as we're releasing, is this a place of revitalizing and recovering? Good, and then slowly roll up. And I promised you I was gonna bring down the mat here. So, hey, I call this real deal yoga. You're just having a real deal session with Skip here. And uh, so it's real deal, I love it. So now we can, oh, I didn't use the mat before, I can use the mat now. Here's a great way to use your mat, just to open it up, unfold it, or maybe just have a little bit more um, cushion for your knees, which is really, really important. I'm 55 years old, I'll be 56 next month, June, I'll be 56. And 
I have those needs. We all have those needs. You know the ones I'm talking about. We're going to go to the other side, my friends. So I'm going to go into this way so you can see what we're doing on this side here from the side view. All right, guys, here we go. So the blocks are here. We're ready for this. And we're going to step the left foot all the way through to the very top. And we're gonna line that right leg back behind you here. And again, I always wanna check in with my sacrum first. I wanna get a nice long sacrum. So I feel it back there. I feel my sacrum there. And then say, is it long or am I hyperextension? Am I dumping? I don't wanna dump. So I'm gonna judge my foot back a little bit more, but align the left knee over the left ankle here. And then I'm going to begin to slowly lower the hip the hip flexor towards the floor, but still not dumping into the back. And I'm just lengthening through my spine. So the full spine from the tailbone to the head is getting really long here. Yeah. The blocks are here to help us. So we want to have great blocks to help us here. Yes, and this is it. So we're going to do three more rounds of breathing and maybe anytime you want to go a little bit deeper into this hip opener, it's all good here. And this is the time where I'm telling myself I'm not worrying about my shopping list or something I need at the grocery store. I'm really thanking my hip for actually showing up and wanting to stretch today. So, 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 so important. Just taking a deep breath in. And as we're beginning to re-emerge, because phase one actually started this week, we're re-emerging. What gifts from this quarantine are you bringing into the planet? What have you learned? What have you learned? Good, one more big, big, big breath here. Open up your heart, maybe lift the heart a little bit more, look up to the sky. Beautiful. Good, and we're just gonna come back, we're gonna lift the left knee back, we're gonna open up into a wide child's pose here. All right, so we are now gonna move into a twisting pose. I'm gonna stay right here. I'm gonna use my blocks for both. We're gonna start off into that hip opener that we just experienced. So we're gonna step the right leg forward first. So I'm gonna step my right leg forward here. I'm gonna bring my hands right down to the block. The first thing you first, I'm gonna actually go through a little bit of a flow for my hamstring as well. So I have my back foot turned underneath. The toes should not be sickled. Long into your back here. And we're just gonna drop the hip down. This is a big inhale. And then as we exhale, we're gonna go back into a half split. So we're just gonna go into a little bit of a half split. It's not big at all. It's just enough to stretch through the hamstring. Let's go back. We're using our block today, dropping our hips down to the ground. And then we come back into your half splits. Good, use your block. Let's come back into a beautiful hip stretcher here. Good, quad, hip flexor, and then back into the hamstring. Good, and we come back into that long leg. Now listen, you can stay on your knee if you want to, or you can come up off your toe, it's up to you. Taking your left hand, your left blocker to bring it right close to your right foot here. And then we're gonna take your right hand behind the sacrum here, and then make sure it's nice and long, and we're gonna get into a nice little spinal twist here. So we're looking over your right shoulder behind you, Nice look here, just taking your breath here. Maybe go a little bit deeper, but we're keeping the sacrum nice and long. Could take a moment here just to breathe. Good, we're gonna come back into our neutral spine here. Take the other block, we're just gonna get a moment to get off our knees. We're gonna roll the toe underneath, we're gonna come off the knee if you choose to. Stay here, stay really long into the back, off your knee if you choose to, or stay on your knee. And then taking your left block close to the right foot, and lift the right hand high to the sky for our first spinal twist. First spinal twist here. You can bring the hand right back to the sacrum here, and roll through again. Good, take another breath here. 
and then full release back to the floor here. Toe to the ground, and then we go back into a half split. And maybe in this round, we can go a little bit deeper using our blocks, maybe take it down a little bit deeper here, widening it out, get a little bit longer into your head. And maybe sit back into your hips a little bit more if you choose to. Good, coming out of that, excellent. We're gonna go to the other side. You can stay there, but I'm switching around so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, guys. We're gonna take the left leg all the way through first, right where we were before. Back leg is nice and long here. Good, dropping our hip down towards the floor. Open up, and then we're gonna just go back into a half split. Bring the toe high, and then coming back into your, your hip flexor, Stretch into your hamstring stretch. One more round of the movement. Good. And then coming back. Good. We're coming back. We're staying on the knee for the first round of the spinal twist on this side here. We're going to take our left hand, bring it to the sacrum, and then twist to the wards of the left shoulder and see where we are in the back. Good, continue to breathe, continue to feel. Continue to keep the spine really long. Sweet. Good, four, three, two, and one. We're coming right back down to the center. We have one more round, and this is the first big, big time we're off that knee. So we're gonna come off the knee if you choose to stay there. Get really long in that back leg. Take the right hand, bring the block close to the left foot, and then take the left hand high to the sky and bring it back and touch the sacrum and big rotation. And at any time, you can drop right down to your knees for sure. Good. Big roll, a little bit more here on your exhale. Good. And we're going to lower the knee down, lower your hand down to the block here. We're going to sit back into our half splits, flexing the foot. Remember, you don't have to go all the way back, but some of us might want to go all the way down and then head towards your knee. Again, sometimes a pose is challenging, but are we being gentle with how we're thinking, how we're loving ourselves? Good. One more Good, and coming out of that, nice. Let's bring the legs back around. We're gonna get at that wide leg at child's pose. Once again, wide leg, open up, let your head float. Good. Nice, and coming back up, nice and easy. Oh, breathe, yes, that was good. All right, we're going back to the floor, guys. We're going back to the floor, and you need your strap. Grab a little water, grab your strap. And we're going back to the floor here. I'm gonna move the blanket out of the way, just for right now, just for right now. And I'm gonna open my legs up into a wide leg stretch here. And again, working the abductors, and it's great to have some space here where you can open up your legs. If you don't, I'm gonna grab my strap here. It's gonna help us for a nice spinal twist. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my blocks. Cause this is a great way to do this work here with a block to feel supported, to continue to feel gentle or a book, whatever you need to do here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the block, we're gonna bring it maybe about three inches away from you. And if you wanna use two blocks to come up a little bit higher, it's up to you. You can use the, the blocks here any way that you choose to. And we're just going to a wide-legged stretch. And we're gonna take our forehead, we're gonna place our forehead onto the block and palms are gonna be lifted. And you do not have to use both blocks. You can use one block. I'm gonna take one down for me and just gonna bring my head here. And if you can go down a little bit further, move the block away. So release the head towards the block and then the palms should be up and open, fingertips to the floor, and then roll your ankles open towards the back of the room. And then we get to continue to lengthen your spine and just relax the head towards your block here. 
just taking moments here to breathe and just to be still, to be present. And where is it opening up for you? Where are you feeling this today? Maybe it's showing up in your middle of your thighs or in your in your calves or your hamstrings. One of the things is you continue on. If you ever want to move the block down, go a little bit deeper, go ahead. One of the most important things, we're learning how to practice without judgments. One of my big core issues is feeling that I'm good enough, that I am enough, that I've done enough. So this is my practice to know that my splits are where my splits are today. It is enough. It's always enough. I'm always enough. Take another deep breath here and just release. Let go, let go, let go, let go. You are enough. Mm. Sweet. Take your hands out. We're going to claw the hands on the floor. We're going to link them through the spine. We're going to get really long as we rise up. And we're going to bring the soles of the feet together for a, butter, for a butterfly pose. We're going to do a supported butterfly pose too, just to give a little bit of opener here. And how I like to do supported butterfly pose, I like to take a block here and bring another block higher up and I move it away from my, my hips. And this gives me a chance to really work on focusing on my inner thighs here. And I grab my hands around here, around my toes, or I will grab the block, whatever is comfortable for you. Maybe grab your ankles. We can open them up a little bit more. And this will be a rolled spine, so you will be able to roll. Let me show you from the side of what it looks like. This will be a rolled spine here. So it's flexing the spine and it's okay. You can move this way a little bit more here. And in this time, when we're finding our space, are we surrendering? Are we surrendering to this pose? Let's surrender together. Three breaths. So let's lengthen the spine and move it back nice and long here. Breathe, let's take the blocks away and we're going to grab our straps. It's time to grab your straps. We're gonna take the strap, we're gonna open up, no loop right now, we'll go back to the loop in a moment. Take the strap and some of us don't need to do Paschimottasana in, in, with a strap. Paschimottasana is one of those things, it is, Tadasana is that mountain pose. Think about we're being a mountain and we're seated, the seated mountain. So we grab the strap, bring it around the transverse arch. That's the, the meaty part of where your bunion, my mama calls it a bunion, so it's gotta be called the bunion. And your fifth met metatarsal is, is connecting right across the meaty part. And I like to come up really long in my spine first, maybe judge my butt backwards, lengthen to the spine, think about head lifted nice and high. And then I will walk my hands down towards my strap and then I will lengthen through my spine and get really long in my back first, and then lower from the lumbar spine, and then we lower down through the thoracic, and then through the head, elbows towards the floor. And here comes a big surrender. Hamstrings are really connected to your glutes, glutes connected to your back, so it's all connected. We get to really surrender into opening up the hamstrings, looking at our big toes, and then forward fold it if you choose to with your head. Really focus on the breath as we began our practice today and breath and how it felt. And we don't want to overstretch to the back, so you take it to the place where it feels right for you. One more breath. Just lengthen through the spine. Beautiful, and just release your stretch. We're gonna do a counter pose for that work here. We're gonna bend our knees, open up the legs. You can actually grab a block for this and take the block 
into a wide position here because we want a wide leg here. So we're gonna get it nice and wide between right, right above your knees, right into the thigh level here. Anchor into your feet. You're gonna squeeze and walk your knees where your knees and toes are in alignment. Take your hands right behind you here. Keeping the stability and wide the block, it keeps stability into your hips. So we're gonna lift the hips, hide the sky for reverse table. And then this is a counter pose to the forward fold that we did there, just to open up. And just to breathe. Feels like we can breathe again, yes. Mm. Two more breaths. Anytime you need to come out of it, you come out of it. Please do, please do. Nice, and just full release here. Good, remove the block. Give yourself a big love hug. A big juicy, juicy love hug here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, nice. All right, guys. So we are going back to the back just for a moment here. We're gonna do another opener for the front of the body here, but you need one block. And it's just gonna be a gentle bridge. It's gonna be really good before we go into our pigeon pose for today. So we're gonna open up the back of the hips again. We're almost done. You're almost there. So grab your block. Let's roll all the way back down to the ground. And um, I found this, um, this lavalier microphone to help me with sound. And this is the first one we're testing. It's in the way, so I promise you I'm gonna get better at this as I, as I grow. So does these videos for YouTube will grow as well, I promise. Um, but I'm, I'm working on this and, and, and so you're right here with me. You're testing the new lavalier mic. I hope it's working better than the other ones, but everything's all good. So we'll see what happens. So I'm bending my knees, gonna grab one block. If you have another block, it'll be a great way to do a gentle bridge pose here just to open up through the quads and the hip flexor again. So taking the block this time in a long direction, let me move this direction here. And it goes right up into your special spot. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, my yoga class knows. The special spot right up in here. Okay, so then you're gonna take the other block and I want you to put it on either the low or medium tower. This is low tower here. This is your low tower. And this is medium tower. High towers here. We don't want our back on that. So we want medium or low. We're gonna come up into a bridge pose first, and you're gonna slide your block underneath where the sacrum is, where we've been touching all day long, and you're gonna just let your back just lay there. If you wanna come up a little bit higher, you're more than welcome to come up into a medium space, but still on the sacrum. Walk your feet underneath your knees, squeeze the block to help stability into your hips. Hands out to the side here, or option, bring your hands around to your elbows, to open up the chest and just breathe for five well-deserved breaths here. <sighs> this is a great centering pose. Brings us back to this place of center. Brings us back to a place where we can just release a lot of the tension in the front of the body because we're so forward folded all the time. We get to open up. The more we open up, the more we can release. Two more. That's breath. So let's lift the hips, we move the hands, lift the hips, take the block out, oh, bring it out to the side. Before we go into our pigeon sequence, I want you just to go side to side, windshield your legs, keep them open, release any tension that's in your hips or your back.
Hey, so welcome to our pigeon sequence here. I'm gonna move this back just a little bit so you can see what we're doing here. So I have my boister, and I love doing this as a way that I found a little bit more hip openers uh, for me in the back of my hips, my gluteus maximus minimus, my abductors, my uh, medius really opens up. They all open up together. And it, I found a little deeper, deeper stretch for me. So I'm gonna invite you to use your pillow if you do, or even your blanket. Have your blocks in front of you here. It's a great prop, great tool to help to support our spine. We'll move back even a little bit more so you can see how my body's landing and you get to choose how your body's landing here. So I'm gonna move it out to the side so you can see. First thing I'm gonna have it right across my mat here. And how do I get onto the to the moisture with a with a elevated um, pigeon pose? I just get my knee right up there. There's no gentle way on there. And I place my hip and my knee onto the moisture here. And then I find my way to judge where I can feel a little bit comfortable, where I want my hip to be elevated. I want my knee to be elevated. My hip is actually off of the moisture a little bit from the back. I think you can see that back there a little bit more. And with the elevated pose, it's so important to have a block where we can really begin to center in. You can use your blocks a lot of different ways. You can do ways, you can take it here, bring your head right to your block, or you can bring it up, or you just use your hands right here. It's completely up to you how you wanna use your block today. So sometimes I like to come here and just take a nice little opener here into my hip. But again, you can do this on the ground, you can do this on the pillow, you can do this on the blanket, it's up to you. Now another way, if I'm doing this with my elevated prop here, I wanna get into a place where I can begin to kind of just sink and release my head towards the floor. And that helps a little bit more tension that's in the back of your neck. We take time here just to find that space here. We're gonna hold this for another three breaths and any time it's starting to feel a little bit more challenging, don't do it, come out of it. Go into your child's pose. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah, breathe. I'm here with you today. This feels good, especially after sitting all this week. I'm shooting this on a Friday. I've been doing a lot of computer work, a lot of work doing some other things that's coming forth for me in this place of, a, of abundance and new ideas that are birthing and a lot of sitting, creating new programming and things that I'm, I'm, I'm gonna launch into the summertime and the fall and is requiring a lot of sitting. So this feels so, Good. Remember, you don't have to use a block. Maybe there might be a point where you even want to go all the way down and releasing your head. One more breath. Good, and coming up nice and long here in your spine. Good, awesome. So we're gonna simply, no big way to do it, just get out of it. I'm gonna show you from a side view on this next round so you can really see where my, my body's landing here. So I have this out to the side. I'm gonna bring my left knee on top. Remember, there's no real great way to do it. We just judge our weight on there. Judging just means move or, or shift it or shift it around. My back leg can be bent. There is a hip opener here. There's some area off of there that allows me to sink a little bit deeper. And then I can move my ankle onto the block a little bit more, or excuse me, onto the blanket a little bit more here. And then I find whatever prop I'm gonna use for my upper body. And let's just begin to surrender here. And letting it go. And there might be a little time where you wanna judge it around and move it down. Judge is my new word, do you, you hear that? I'm saying it a lot. And it's okay, it's okay. Breathe into the hip. Breathe into that energetic vibration and frequency that's flowing through the hip right now. You're feeling this. And then connect with the mind. The mind is, is here to organize these feelings. What are you feeling? 
And if it's a sh I am hoping it's not pain or a sharp pain, but remember if it's dis ease and you, your body's saying stop, you stop, listen. But the energy that you're feeling right now that's flowing through it, it's opening, it's releasing, it's letting go, impurities and toxins, the vibration, and the body's saying, oh, I'm waking up. Take another deep breath here. Just really feel this pose here, grounding ourselves into the floor, letting it go. Good. Let's take the hands off to the side and slowly just bring our bodies off of the boister here. Coming back, knees behind us here. And we can even do a little quick child's pose here. Bring the hands onto the pillow, head down. All right, guys, so huh, that was good openers. Love your hips, love your hips right now. Love, 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 love. So, so, so good. So we're gonna go onto our backs and we're gonna do some spinal work onto the back and we're gonna do some hip openers for the side as well. We're almost done, we're almost there. So grab your strap. We need our strap for this, grab your strap. And this is where we are gonna use a little tiny loop this round, but this round, we're gonna take the voice, we're gonna save it for Shavasana, which is coming up really quickly. Well, not quickly, as quick as it needs to come, so trust. All right, so we're gonna go down to the floor. We're gonna lay onto our backs. I like to grab my knees when I'm going down to the floor here. And just take some moments here, getting ourselves reacquainted to the floor. We're gonna take our right foot, bring it into the little loop there. You might even need to open it up a little bit because we did the forward fold, the seated forward fold pose. So there could have been a little bit of adjustment there. So we're gonna flex the foot here. You can keep the opposite leg bent or straight is up to you. I'm gonna take mine down straight today. So I'm gonna get a little bit more extra stretch into the hamstring. We're gonna focus on the IT band first. And this is the IT band stretch where the IT band actually crosses through the knee all the way up into the thigh, all the way into your hip, into your sciatic. And if you have sciatic, which I do, because I've had back surgeries before, um, I've had two back surgeries, so sciatic is like my friend. I made peace with it, but I also know when I don't want it, how to stretch it. This is one of the sequences that helped me to get rid of any sciatic energy, energy that I'm having, so. So we take the foot nice and long and flexing, make sure the loop is around the ball of the foot. Flexing the foot really strong here, heel to the sky. And you're gonna take the strap, you're gonna bring the opposite hand to the strap. And I want you to take your right hand, right foot's in the air, right hand down to the floor. And I just want you to, to flex your heel. This movement is very, very, very small. It's not a big movement, not where you wanna go. Trust me, we're gonna get there eventually. With the hands down to the floor where you can connect there, you're going to flex a foot and you're going to take it over the hips. Just a very, very minute. It's a little bit of a pull over to the opposite side. Now this right hip, I'm working to get it to the floor and keeping it connected to the floor. Let me get the strap out of the way. Keep it connected, hand down, and the pull is very, 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 very minute. But with flexing the foot and heel, and hip pressing the opposite direction, you're gonna feel the energy and the vibration that's coming from the side of the leg into the ankle. And it's just very, 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 very small. Your work and your focus is to keep that other hip, your right hip, to the floor. All hips are to the floor. Keep it balanced here. Going back to the breath, so, so, so important. Going back to the breath, yes. Good. So I'm gonna give you what you want, this is it. We're gonna take the foot all the way over to the other side. You can bend the knee, my foot just hit the couch, or you can keep it straight, or let me show you this. You can grab the block and place it right on top where the leg can lay onto the block just like that and just give a nice little pull through the hamstring if you don't need the block remove it 
What is the other leg doing? It's active, it's strong. One more breath. Sweet. Let's bend the knees, let's come out of that. Oh, let it go. Huh. We're gonna do the other side, switch. Oh yeah. Take the other foot, bring it in there. Nice and easy. Pull that down here. Flexing your foot really long. Flexing the heel. Other leg nice and long if you choose to. You're gonna take the opposite hand, grab the strap here. Left hand to the floor. And you're just gonna give a nice little hamstring stretch. Align the ankle over the knee and then just take it over a minute little stretch until you feel the energy in the IT band. Just waking up from the side and the hip. Just breathe, it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. We're almost there. And here we go, my friends. Just give them what you want. Here it is. We're gonna take it over to the side. Now I see my block right there. So I can put my block right underneath my calf if I choose to and do the twist there or don't need a block, drop it to the floor and move it away. The bottom leg can be bent, it's up to you. This is a great stretch for the hamstrings and the hips together and the glutes. It gets it all right here and the spinal twists. We're almost there, four, three, two, and one, release, let it go, bring it back up, let the strap go. Oh, oh my goodness, we are here. We're here into our final, final, final breath and movement and it's, it's, it's done. We've done the big work here in our gentle yoga class. Only thing I want you to do is bring your ankles and toes together, bring your hands out to the side. Let's rise up into a nice gentle bridge right now. You bring your knees together, keep them wide, it's up to you. This really recenters the body here. Three, two, and one. Let's release the hips to the floor, take the legs out nice and long, palms are open. Welcome to Shavasana. Welcome to the breath. Welcome to the time where you can just reflect on everything that we did today. Just taking some moments just to be still, to be present. You stay right there, follow your breath as I rise up to guide you through your Shavasana. Close your eyes. Release the practice and just follow the breath. And today was your day. You said yes to revitalizing yourself, to re-energizing, to renew, to rest. Today is your day. You said yes to yoga. Today is your day. There's a new spirit that's being birthed in this moment. What is seeking to emerge what is seeking to become new from you? The healing begins now. Every day is a great day to say yes to healing. Breathe. Remember. Renew. Re-energize.
So slowly begin to increase your breath. Maybe wiggle your fingers around or give yourself a little rock side to side movement. And bend your knees and turn over onto your right side body just for a moment of transition. Using your top arm and your bottom arm to rise up into a seated pose. Let's find a soft cross legs. You can use your block if you want to use your block in this moment or on the floor, Sukhasana. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me today in this gentle yoga class where we talked about the breath, opened up the hips, we restored the body, we remember, remember, remember. This is a time of rest, of renewal, revitalization. This is it, this is our reset. That when we're able to move back into our normal activities, we're bringing a new light, we're bringing some new love, we're bringing some new energy, some new newness to what we're doing. I am so grateful, so grateful that we've had this time together. Peace and blessings.